you. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back everyone to Big Data Silicon Valley. This is Big Data SV, our event is an extension from Big Data NYC a few months ago. We're covering all the action here in Silicon Valley, all the innovation, covering all the news at the Strata Conference uh, and all the action. And uh, here, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined here with a special guest, John Schroeder, the CEO, founder of MapR, and Colin Mahoney, CEO of Vertica, now the GM of Vertica, now that was acquired by HP three years ago almost now. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, both CUBE alumni. Thanks, John. Welcome Thank back. Thanks, John. Good to be here. So big news, you guys are, have a, uh, an announcement. Let's, uh, let's announce the news that's already been discussed. You guys are working together on a partnership. Let's explain it. So Colin, why don't you introduce the, the deal and then we can have a discussion with MapR. Yeah, so uh, super excited about our relationship with MapR. And what we're doing is we're, we're really combining two great solutions so that customers that want to take advantage of big data or any data, their information, can do it seamlessly. Obviously what Vertica brings to the table is uh, an incredible MPP uh, SQL analytic platform primarily. Uh, but when you think about the big data lake and where people are putting a lot of their information into Hadoop and doing a lot of other analytics in Hadoop, it just makes sense that you can have a single environment where you can do anything you want against the, the data. So really excited about the relationship and what we're doing. And as with, uh, I think, most great partnerships, it's really customer driven. This is coming to us from the field saying it would be great for you to do this. And so we connected and made it happen. So John, you guys have had great success over the years and, and it's fun to watch, you know, being present in creation in this industry from the original Hadoop world days and seeing how all the players are finding their swim lanes, as they say. You guys have a, a nice business model. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, people like uh, subscription revenue, right? So yeah. talk about MapR and where it's at and this, why this relationship is timely for you guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're right as far as our business model. I mean, we're more like a Splunk than a Red Hat. I mean, we're, we built technology, bring technology to market that really makes a difference. Most production ready Hadoop distribution in the, in the industry. And um, over the last year, you've got a tremendous amount of activity around SQL on Hadoop. And so there's a, you know, multiple open source projects. Uh, there's some other vendors that are providing solutions as well. And you know the thought process at 30,000 feet is, well, I've got a huge amount of analysts that understand SQL and SQL-based technologies, and I've got Hadoop, and I'm building a data lake or a data hub, and it scales really well, and it's inexpensive, so how do I glue those things together? And so I put out a prediction at the beginning of the year uh, that was SQL is going to be the most exciting and disappointing technology for 2014 because the state of the technology wasn't where the customer thought it was going to be. So back in October, I gave Colin a call and said, you know, you've got a SQL platform as part of your MPP platform that is robust and will act the way the customers are expecting SQL to act. So um, we've got this full POSIX compliant data layer as part of our Hadoop distribution. We, we can integrate these and have a best of, best of breed solution, uh, really kind of a one plus one equals three. And uh, the engineering work really wasn't that difficult. We, we, we got that done between October and now, and we got a, a screaming platform now. Yeah, and you guys have a solid engineering organization, and talking to uh, Shrevis and the team, fantastic over the years, and very focused on the enterprise. And, and Colin, obviously enterprise grade has been a conversation, it's been kicked around now for two years. When that kind of happens, you just start to think, okay, is it, it's either going to be real or it's going to or, or be a dud. But, but it's really busting out. That essentially means people are spending money, your mm -hmm. customers. And you guys have a really huge mainstream enterprise base, obviously HP. So when you talk to your customers, when they say, I want enterprise grade, what does that mean? And so I see SQL's a big part of their, your customer base. What does that enterprise grade mean? And you have to deliver on that. Yeah, no, we absolutely do. I think every vendor in the you know, quote unquote big data space has to deliver on, on enterprise grade. I think 2014 is the year that it's no longer, you know, what I, the analogy I always use with people around big data and some of the years past is uh, all these penguins that get on the edge of the iceberg and they nudge each other off and they hit one in the water to see if the tiger shark comes and eats them. That was a little bit of what big data was. People weren't sure how to define it. They didn't know if it made sense. I think we're past that. I think people now... Penguins are jumping in the water? Penguins are in the water. <laughs> penguins are swimming. CIOs know that they can become heroes with the things that they're doing around information and data. There's an incredibly high ROI with anything analytic re related when you can do it right. But back to your question on enterprise grade, 
in order to do that and in order to have systems that are operational and that businesses are depending on, whether it's SQL analytics, interactive queries, dashboards, deep uh, data science insight, whatever it is that you're doing with it, you have to know that the data is secure, you have to know that the data is backed up, you have to know that you've got failover, that if something happens to the hardware or different parts of the system that you can continue running. And I think making it easy for the ops people, who are oftentimes the last people to be told that, well, we just bought this thing, now can you help us manage it? Those things are becoming more critical now than ever. So this is a great deal for MapR, obviously a startup that's validated with huge install base with HP going mainstream with enterprise grade, um, you know, big data. Um, John, do you worry about the, the scope of the deal? I mean, you're like, is this, are you biting off more than you can chew with HP? Is this something that you guys think you can execute on? And, or is it pretty much scalable at this point from your standpoint? Is this at the, the point of your startup journey uh, where this is no problem? No, I mean, that's, that's what we built in. Is if you look at what we did with Hadoop over the last few years, we took it from a technology built for Web 2.0. We made it enterprise grade, make it interoperate with everything else in the data center, support multi-tenancy because people want a data lake they can share between departments and workloads, secure it. You know, standard Hadoop's very easy to spoof, so you had to secure it. We've moved it into some of the operational use cases because a lot of uh, a lot of our apps have a batch component, but they got a real time component that has to be responded to in milliseconds. And uh, so that enterprise grade was built into kind of the first version. And probably the difference between uh, MapR and and more traditional technologies is if you have a, a thousand node cluster with twelve drives each, you're going to have a stack of broken drives and a stack of broken servers on your desk at all times. I mean, it's just a it's just nature, it is. right? It's just <laughs> going to happen. So the whole system's built to assume failure. So it's like drives go out, you re-replicate data. Uh, a server goes down, you re-replicate the services, and you do all that with no outages. So that works really well. What made it really easy to integrate with with uh, Vertica, though, is uh, really a, that underlying data platform. Full read-write, uh, random writes, things like that. Um, it uh, it made the whole integration task way easier. It'll be way more high performance. Than so it was a really quick deal. You said October. Now we're here. You know, very short. That's a short time frame for a deal. Um, so let's get into the deal. Is it? Is it get, let's talk about the mechanics of the deal. What specifically are you guys doing for each other? Is it a channel deal? Is it a certification technology share? Could you just go dig deeper into the deal? You want me to go? Sure. Yeah. So so right now it's. I, I think we both characterize it as more meat in the channel. The teams are working together in the field. Uh, working with our partners uh, to basically get customers and prospects up and running who want to do this. But as John said, the integration is very seamless. It's not a difficult thing to set up and do. That is one of the reasons that we were able to get it together so quickly. So there's not a lot of work that has to be done to get it going. And then, you know, we'll see where it goes. How about support and uh, rolling out? You guys will be selling the MapR through your channels and supporting it, or is MapR supporting their product? Right, right now it's a meet in the channel, so we both sell and, sell and support our own products. Right okay. now we might change that in the future if we decide to, um, but that's the current model. I think you know, the first steps on this was you know, hearing from customers, we want these solutions to work together, do the upfront engineering work so it all works. Now this is a, a, an announcement of an, an early release of this, and uh, we'll work more on it as we move forward. And it could get tighter or we could be successful the way we are. Where do you guys see this going? What's the next step? I'm asking you, the public company never gives away any secrets of HP. But, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but even to extend it, obviously, this could go to another level. You guys talk about the vision on the roadmap of this relationship at all in terms of the HP uh, map our relationship? Yeah, we do. I mean, I think there's a, there's a lot of different directions that it, that it can go. I think another similarity that we have in our cultures, whether it's engineering or the way John and I are, is let's see where the customers take it. Let's not force anybody down a path, but what we do know is that if you look at any MPP environments, be it Hadoop, be it Vertica, there is a new deployment model going on inside these companies around information that is a pure scale-out model. And so the first thing the customers say is, this is fantastic, you know, we, we can manage a single farm of servers and get, as John said, we can get SQL out of it, we can do a lot of analytics. So, we're going to see where we take it. You know, we're we're open-minded, and uh, you know, 
just have to see what happens. So you guys are both entrepreneurial. Obviously, you know, Colin, you're a big GM now at HP, big mothership at, within the company. But you know, Vertica was a startup at one point. You guys grew that successfully, and HP, you know, brought it in. One of the the, the best acquisitions they've done in a while. And, you know, great leverage. Uh, John, you've done a bunch of startups. You've been successful at. Uh, what's your take on the big data industry? You guys grew up at the Gen One big data. We we'll call it Gen One. It's been around for a while, but really, this whole Hadoop big data movement. Uh, with Hadoop World, Hadoop Summit, now Strata Conference and Big Data SV and NYC. What's your take of all the new players coming in? Um, are there people groping for position? Is there a lot of white space? Do you see consolidation? What are some of the trends that you see happening right now in the industry? Uh, right now, I think uh, if you look specifically at the Hadoop space, it's, it's, uh, I think it's distilled down to a few platform providers. I mean, I don't think there's much more room for, for more platform providers, and, and so we're, we're, we're a leader there. Uh, I don't think it's ready to vertically integrate the stack. If you look at the top level of the stack, you've got a tremendous amount of innovation from both uh, legacy vendors and purpose-built startups building new technologies around analytic platforms and visualization and development tools and all that. And I think it's premature to, to vertically integrate that. Um, so I think uh, you know we're going to really focus on that platform. We probably add a new open source project into our distribution every quarter or so. So there's nice things that enough customers want that we make it a core part of our distribution. But there's probably 600 other technologies out there that interoperate with MapR and Hadoop. And uh, so it's, it's good for customers. They're on a technology ride, right? It's, uh, you know, they can look ahead and say, I've got the broadest set of products and services available and it's going to continue to grow in the future. And uh, I don't think we'll see vertical, vertical integration there for another you know, 10 So, I mean, years. we were joking and before, you know, a lot of people might tap out. I was uh, on a, a couple of interviews earlier, and yesterday Dave and I always kick around, hey, you know, who's going to tap out, drop out of the race? But yeah. normal industry formation and growth is you start to see people coalesce into, into pockets of, uh, of segments that they, they're comfortable dominating or competing in. Um, and that seems to be happening now. Do you see that? accelerating this year, more M&A or more partnering, more you know, people kind of make, making their platform out? Because at some point, ecosystems are the key. I mean, Haven and the big data strategy for HP and for MapR, your platform, uh, you need an ecosystem. That's got to come from somewhere. So where do you guys see that trend of uh, the formation of the industry around the ecosystems and the platforms and from a developer standpoint or just from market, market conditions? Yeah, I mean, I'll build on what John was saying. I think um, it is a great time in the industry if you're a buyer because there is so much innovation. But with that comes a lot of fragmentation, and I think it makes the formation of that ecosystem that you're talking about more challenging for the buyers to figure out what actually works and what solves the problem. I think that's one of the reasons that we and many others are talking about it less so about the speeds and feeds and more so about what problem are you trying to solve? You know, don't just do it for data's sake. Don't just do it to put another acronym on the bottom of your resume. Uh, but <clears throat> what is the problem you're trying to solve? And I think the good news is buyers are savvy to that now, and they know that there are many things you can do with these platforms. I think on the on the sort of consolidation and, and formation of the ecosystem, I mean, all these industries, they consolidate, you know, it's just a natural maturity cycle of what they do, and I think we're starting to maybe see some of that happen already. John, I want to ask you a question around that, just to kind of drill on it. You guys, I remember two years ago at Google I.O., you guys had an amazing uh, benchmark oh, yeah. with Google, you guys are playing in the cloud. Your team knows a little about scale up, scale out, uh, large scale cloud. Yeah. Um, hyperscale has been a huge focus for the DevOps or cloud, which is where you see kind of an intersection with big data uh, happening. Um, do you see the enterprise market for you guys and HP, that mid-range hyperscale developing? I mean, do you see that developing sooner than later? Or are the enterprises who are moving into more of the open source, more of these enterprise grade solutions, they're looking for hyperscale. Is that elusive? Is that going to be coming around the, down the pike anytime soon? Uh, if I understand your question right, are, are, is the is mainstream market ready for these large deployments to build out yeah. data lakes and data hubs and things like that? And they're, I mean, they're already doing it. I mean, we're in basically every major telco, we're in every major fin services and healthcare and federal government. Um, still a lot in Web 2.0 as well. And uh, so, you know, 2,000 server deployments in retail, 1,200 server deployments in financial services. So I think that's happened. It's still. I would say it's still lumpy though. Like you'll look across financial services and you think, well, they'd all move at the same rate and you'll find one that's you know, 5X the size of the next largest and then you'll find somebody who's really a laggard. So that's been kind of interesting. Probably telco has been the most consistent adopter. I mean, across the board, 
Um, and it's it might be it's such a competitive market, right? I mean, how do you how do you survive out there if you don't have better analytics and better processing? But um, I think they're certainly ready, and there's huge huge proof points. I'd say probably the the part in the market that is still interesting it, it is the lumpiness. You know, why aren't they all there? And that's what we think we'll see them uh, move to over the next year or two. My final question for you guys, I know we're wrapping up on time here, but uh, is to uh, tell me what you think of the current state of the market in terms of the bumper sticker for this year uh, for big data. You guys have been there uh, from the beginning. What, what's this show, what's the big data SV event this, this year? What's it about this year? What's the main story that people should know about that aren't present here at, the, at Strata Conference? What's going on in the industry that's most important to be noted? I think what's going on, what you're going to see is a lot more analytics and maybe a lot less talk about big data. It doesn't mean that it's going away. I just think people will have the solutions, the application of it. And analytics to me is something, and data for that matter, that needs to be embedded in everything you do. If you use GPS an example, as an example, you don't care what's going on with the data. You know data is being used, but ultimately you just want to get to your destination. And so these things while we may be in the data center and the back end part of it, uh, it's going to find its way into mobility and into all sorts of things, whether it's cloud or, or other. So I think it's, it's going mainstream. Yeah. And I, I think to add to that, I think from the Hadoop perspective, I think it's also, we're starting to see operational use cases on Hadoop. So I, I, I did a talk uh, this morning, a keynote, and you look through a number of our use cases, they do have an analytics compo uh, component to them, but they also have a real-time component. You know, something that has to be responded to in milliseconds. So I think we're seeing that operational uh, component to uh, Hadoop use cases, including uh, uh, really interesting things like telco billing. So you're logging telco transactions, doing analytics on it, but it has that operational characteristic as well. So that's, that's going to what you're going to see rapid growth through 2014. I guess I have one more final question. It's always never a final, final question. Uh, <laughs> is, um, you guys are both entrepreneurs, been there now, executives leading companies operationally. What's your advice to the entrepreneurs out there? There's a lot of still opportunity. You know, I still, even though valuations are high, still a growth market across the board. Um, so there's still, you know, rooms to kind of hop between white spaces if they're seeing that there's no opportunity somewhere they could maybe join an ecosystem or start another company. What's your advice to entrepreneurs out there? You guys have been successful. Uh, in early stage and growing a company, what's your advice to them? I mean, I, every entrepreneur I meet, I think it's passion, and there's always going to be white space. You know, even if an industry consolidates, there's always white space. And 20 people will tell you you can't do it, and it'll never happen. And if you just persist and keep the passion, it'll happen. And that's just always going to happen. And you feel there's opportunity in this market? I think there is. I think there's massive opportunity. I think you, this is a market where, despite all of the need for the information and data, the amount of expertise, you know, whether it's the data scientists and the McKinsey study or other, we're just really lacking that expertise for people that can take the data, analyze it, make sense of it, then act on it. And so as a result, what has to happen is the technologies have to increase that productivity and help out where we don't have all the experts. And that means there's huge opportunities. Yeah. And you guys have a marketplace too, which is a little side plug there. But uh, um, John, what do you think about advice to entrepreneurs? You've been well, there, done that. I absolutely agree. There's white space, and you need a lot of passion. I think perseverance is uh, underrated uh, quality in an entrepreneur. Uh, I think entrepreneurs are generally optimistic and uh, mildly dissatisfied, and that's what gets you, you out of bed in the morning. I, I'd say the the biggest uh, uh, the biggest advice I'd give is follow customers and follow markets. Listen to your customers, find out a big problem you can solve for them, and uh, they'll really guide you in the right direction. Really partner really strongly with your customers because they'll take you in the right in the right direction. Okay, that's John Schroeder, the CEO of MapR, announcing a deal with HP, Colin Mahoney, general manager, uh, former CEO of Vertica, now part of the GM of the Vertica Big Data Group at HP. Congratulations, guys, on a great deal. Great Thank validation, you. and uh, you know, sounds like some good business to be had there. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more here live in Big Data in Silicon Valley. That's Big Data SV. Go to crowdchat.net slash Big Data SV. That's where the conversation has joined us, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs>